Hey, let's talk about dairy. Everybody's up in arms about milk protein and it's not my mother, so it's not my milk. And um, I've heard that many times. So people are drinking plant-based dairy substitutes, which tend to be high glycemic index, by the way, for the most part, but don't have as much protein as dairy protein would have. But there is an issue and people talk about dairy protein and inducing allergic reactions or inflammation. And I had a request, a top-notch, uh, magazine and I think someone was handling this for me anyways it was USA Today or, or another and to write an article on the inflammatory activity of dairy and it's not that cut and dried in fact I don't want to consider dairy protein inflammatory there are elements however within the dairy protein outside the scope of lactose which is another subject matter at all altogether and it's related to the protein source, believe it or not, called casein. I wrote about this a long time ago. I kind of shuffled around that same article for these people. And it speaks to beta casein in milk. There's an A1 beta casein and there's an A2 beta casein. I'm not gonna go into the details to bore you, but the reality is that here in North America, and this is interesting, the cattle that have been inbred to produce more milk, so they're producing milk abundantly over and above what uh, most other cows can produce, and they begin to inbreed and selectively breed these cows. They produce more milk, but a consequence of that higher volume is that they produce also a higher level of A1 beta casein. If we go to Australia or other, uh, especially actually to Asia in particular, where they're not selectively choosing these cows that are producing high volume commercially, the A1, A1 beta casein levels are low versus the A2 beta casein levels. What does this mean? Well, now they're starting to show that this inflammatory response to milk is associated with higher levels of A1 beta casein, which we have in these selected cows producing higher volume of, of dairy here in North America. The A1 casein now is also shown to be a factor that may contribute to type two diabetes and therefore secondarily and indirectly to obesity. So the question is, we have a lot of these man-made things, these influences that we aren't aware of until later on in life as we look back and um, begin to do more research on these compounds. And the A1 beta casein loaded milk of North America creates an incremental risk for, for uh, inflammatory activity, obesity, and diabetes. Now, when you go into the research, you see controversial uh, reporting on this, but it's there. And it's interesting, I wrote this article and I got a whole bunch of flack because of writing the article, but it's based on facts. It's based on the research. In Asia, again, they're not selectively breeding cows for high volume of milk and the A1 beta casein levels are lower in the milk. Therefore, theoretically, there's a lower risk. And we do see that in these countries, lower risk, for type 2 diabetes and obesity.